Hello traders, what is going on? So market has finally recovered for the past two days. So it's at least giving up some phase going towards the end of 2021 and Christmas. So I don't think this little recovery will consider a center rally, not really a rally. It's more like a, a short break from all the bearish sentiment, all the carnage and all the blood on the street. But it is a good respite from all this negative Omicron feelings. Lah. So um, I'm more than healthy to welcome this short recovery. And hopefully for the past two days, most of your position managed to recover. Hopefully they went from red to green or, or they went from lesser green to more green. I'm not sure what's your position now, what counters that you are taking. But as I'm looking through most of the Patreon's trade recommendation, they are doing quite okay. They are doing quite well. And during this retracement, I have two positions that were cut off, which were Propnex and Airbnb. So the rest of the position are still doing fine, although they went into the negative side, right? As long as they don't hit the stop loss, I treat them as they are doing all right. So that, that's my that's how I approach trading now. Okay, so that's not what we are here for today. Uh, this session, right, I want to discuss three counters that you can look to enter maybe today, tomorrow, next week, or at least since the market is recovering, right? And maybe you do not have any position here. You are you are you just join patreon not long ago so you are just waiting around to see what you can enter so previously right um i have a video that was sent out on 2nd of december on what are the counters that you can enter lah, since the market is retracing but 2nd of december is like during this period here so now that we have recovered again right uh, i'm putting it this video up to give you more direction and some traits that you can take for yourself okay so without any further delay let's go to some of these trade and you can already see the three counters right here on my trading view so i'll go through the technical of each and every single one of them and all these three trades right they do belong into different categories and i will personally give my own preference on which are which is the counter that i will prefer but it's totally up to you. It's totally up to you based on your own preference, based on your own risk. Okay, so <clears throat> first, let's go through Tesla. Okay, so Tesla is the only counter within these three that does not have a ongoing trade setup, meaning there's no ongoing trade setup. The last trade setup that we have, we already tp it. So that was uh, this one. That was way back in April, way back in April. We have already TP, we have already trailed, so uh, we have no position in Tesla already. So this is a brand new position, okay? But for Hourglass, <coughs> Hourglass actually have an ongoing trade that haven't hit TP yet. So you can look at trade number 172. And we entered that trade somewhere early November lah, with the entry price at 1.96. And now since the price have come back close to around that entry level, right? You can consider entering um, since, since it is like some kind of showing some level of support, lah. but I, I, will, I will go through this in more detail. And the other one is Marvel Technology. So Marvel Technology, there was a trade set up not long ago on the December 8th, trade 181. And you can see that when we put up this trade set up, the entry price is slightly lower. And in my description, I mentioned that during the time of posting this, the current price is a little high. So it is better for you to wait for retracement in order to have a better risk. And guess what? The price already retraced and actually hit the entry level already. So we will be looking at this counter also. Okay. So with that said, right, um, Tesla is the only counter with no active trade setup. So if you are going to enter this, right, um, I'll, I will be providing some stop loss and profit guidance here 
uh, for the other two, you can look back at the previous trade setup for the stop loss and TP and all those. Lah. So, but firstly, let's look at how the chart structure of Tesla itself. So for those who are familiar with how I do trading, um, I always look at the pyramid of the hierarchy, look at the overall trend first, the primary trend. Primary trend refer to the long-term trend, not the short-term trend. Huh? So for example, right, you can see that the long-term trend for Tesla is actually up, even though the short-term is like currently coming down right now. We, we don't care about the short-term, but we care about the long-term. And secondly, we will look at chart structure. Chart structure in the sense that whether if it had hit any support level or if it has had hit any support turn resistance level, that, 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 that kind of stuff, like, or has it break out from the consolidation zone? So more of a midterm chart structure, okay? <clears throat> so uh, the trend is long-term, the chart structure is midterm. Then finally, we will look at the candle, which is like your current price action. So all these three things need to go hand in hand. You cannot have a long-term downtrend and then you see a green candle, you go in because you will definitely result in a very, very big loss. Um, that's something that we have mentioned several times. So <clears throat> first, in the case of Tesla, we have this long-term uptrend here. So in terms of the trend, right, we are fine. In terms of the chart structure, right, we can see that the support is not really established yet. I cannot say that the support is established yet because this is only one point, okay? So what can happen is that it can go up a bit and it can create like a higher low, sorry, a lower high on this short-term trend and then continues to come back down. So this is the possibility that can happen. So if you decide to take Tesla, right? you have to account for this possibility. You cannot like, oh, this one confirmed up ready. La. I put in my entire life saving. La. Please don't do like that, okay? So you must always ensure to account for other possibility. So I will only <clears throat> consider this to be a support. If let's say price come back down and retest, and then we have like a so-called your double bottom, la. double bottom, okay? If not, if not, a uh, price probably go all the way up and then it broke through here, then this one, of course, definitely a good support also. But <clears throat> there is something else that I would, that I see that kind of give me a little bit of confidence that this price level at 900 should be able to, support the price in the future and that is the resistant turn support level so previously right we have a resistant level here and if i draw a line across you will see how price break out of the resistor and now come back to this resistant level and this is now acting as a support and price is going up and in all our videos right we emphasize the strength of resistant turn support level on a long-term uptrend. On a long-term uptrend only, uh, if you see this pattern on a downtrend, it's not counted. Uh, so that one must emphasize. And next, there is another area, which is this one, this candle here. It's actually quite a crucial candle. This is actually quite a crucial candle because you can see that big volume spike coming out here. Well, yeah, let me show you so that you can see more clearly. <clears throat> You can see this big gap up, big strong candle, big volume spike coming out here. So this is an indication that at this point, right, on this, at this time, 25th of October, there were a lot of buyers coming in. There's a lot of demand. Uh, buyers are willing to pay such a higher price because the previous day price was at 900. Then after that, it jumped up to like 1000. So it means to say that buyers are willing to pay $100 more for Tesla share and a lot of bullishness. Okay, so there's a lot of demand and support at this level. So this whole big candle is acting as a big volume candle is also acting as like a support level. And you can see that the price is kind of going back into this support level already. So if the price managed to break out of this zone, right? If the price managed to break out of this zone, then I will be pretty confident that this level can be supported in the coming future. We have to be careful of this particular candle here because it has equally high volume with the bullish candle and it is a pin bar. 
So after that candle, right, you can see price still managed to go all the way up here. And there is another bullish candle that we see here with quite a significant volume also. Okay. And that is like so-called the top really. Like after that, price start to come back down and come back now. So <clears throat> that, that, that is to say that since we also have a lot of interest, a lot of transaction, high voluming, high transaction, there's a lot of transaction happening at the top, right? Look at all these candles that I, that I point out. All these are high volume area, meaning a lot of interest from buyers and sellers, a lot of transaction, meaning this whole area is quite busy the moment price goes back here right you will not expect it to like just shoot up all the way but rather it will it will kind of like go in a very zigzag sideway direction go um the bulls and the bear will find out a bit before it can kind of like break out lah. so do not expect a very clean run when price start to go into this level here lah. and it can also be that the moment price hit up here there can be seller present that price just come back down and then it decide to consolidate at the lower level, consolidate at this lower level instead of at this higher level here. So maybe instead of doing this, right, instead of doing this, price can actually do this. And if you happen to enter at this price, maybe you might get stuck in a red position while the whole thing is moving sideways. So you have to be prepared for that also, okay? So I'm giving you all the kind of possibility scenario that can happen, huh? okay? So <clears throat> given all this possibility, right? I still think that this area will be, a this price level is a good support level. And, and um, we do see some bullishness in terms of volumes and price action coming in. So it is relatively safe. It does not hit all the checklist of Nimbus Capital trade criteria, but it does hit majority of them. It does hit majority of the checklist. And of course, the advantage here is that we are trying to catch it at the beginning of the rebound, meaning we can go for a very um, aggressive stop loss. Uh. We can go for a very aggressive stop loss, maybe like um, 800, around 800 there, or maybe 850. <clears throat> so when we talk about aggressive stop loss, right, uh, <laughs> from, from the perspective of Tesla, our aggressive is not really aggressive. It is quite wide. <laughs> the stop loss is quite wide. If, but from Tesla perspective, it is aggressive because Tesla is a very volatile. It swings a lot. So, so we need to account for that also. Okay, we cannot like like very stingy put our stop loss at like 900. There, I tell you, 900, uh, confirm get. Whip, whip out one and then the moment you get whip out already the price will go up okay so i will suggest 800 if 800 is too much for you you can go for 850 but 850 is a little dangerous a little dangerous maybe 830 or so okay like, let's let's compromise so uh in this case your tp can be at the previous re previous resistance there like, which is uh 1200 or maybe here, 1,227, 1, 1230. Okay. And that can be your TP1. And of course, TP2 can be even further up. Lah. TP2, I, I will expect probably 1,400 there. Yeah, I think 1,400 is a good TP2 level. Okay, so I want to emphasize one thing. This is very important. New traders or even regular traders, placing your TP at the resistance there, does not mean that it can go back up there. A lot of traders like to do things that are confirmed, meaning it must confirm this, then I will take the trade. My, must confirm that, then I will take the trade. So just because there is a previous resistance there that is allowing you to put your TP level there, it doesn't mean that price can go up there, like 100% chalk go up there. So this is one of the biggest trader mistakes. They always take chart that have resistance they always take trades that have like a downtrend simply because there is a resistance there that they can put their tp so one, once in a while you might be able to get those trade but it is often always better to go for counters with no resistance that resistance level there doesn't mean 
it can confirm hit TP there. Okay, please ah. Uh, this is one trend that I'm seeing all across a lot of traders, especially in 2021. And it actually opened my eyes. It actually opened my eyes because I always wonder why are people taking downtrend counters? Why are traders picking up all these lousy, stupid, like the price don't know drop until where already they go and pick them up? Because they look at the previous resistance level and they think, oh, price can confirm recover that, like drop enough already, the risk reward ratio good. So these are bad, very bad mindset, very bad mentality and very bad concept, very bad trading concept. If you are someone who keep doing this kind of stuff, right? I think, uh, please come to my course. Please come to my course. I this thing, this, this topic cannot be discussed within one hour, two hour, or even like one day. It is a very long discussion that have to be done. Okay, and there are traders who deliberately avoid all time high counters. There are traders who deliberately scared to take counter with no resistance because they don't know where to place their. TP and that is mind boggling because it, <laughs> it goes against the basic of technical analysis, which is uptrends, no resistance, no selling pressure. The fact that there's a resistance there is an indication that there's a selling pressure there. And, and I, I, I don't know, like, I don't know. I mean, uh, it's surprising to me because finally the answer to the question that have been plaguing me for years and years. Like, why are people taking downtrend counters with resistance has been answered. And, and I'm happy because now I can teach the right thing. Now I can say the right thing to encourage trader not to do this kind of funny, funny things. Okay. Okay. So uh, I'm going to just leave it as that. So <clears throat> back to Tesla, right? Back to Tesla. That, that is not to say that Tesla cannot hit the TP level, but the trade setup for Tesla here is probably not as good as the other two. And once again, right, Tesla also have the possibility of getting a lower high and then going down. So in terms of uh, trade setup within this group of three counters, I find Tesla to be the weakest, but it is still up there because Overall, compared to every other counters, I think it's still quite okay. It's still quite okay. And if you are the a little bit risk taker, if you like Tesla, then maybe you can go for it. I personally will not go for this, but maybe you can you can try and go for it, lah, provided that you take your risk and you follow your stop loss properly. Okay. So that's for Tesla. Second, hourglass. So this is the <laughs> this is the only. Singapore counter on this list. And in fact, it is one of the very few Singapore counters that is surviving quite well, surviving quite well. And in fact, if you look at our glass, the chart is similar to Tesla. The chart is similar to, somewhat similar to Tesla. So price have already retraced quite a bit from this very high here. And <clears throat> We are also reaching a crucial structure, price structure. And of course, let's not talk about the trend. It's very obvious that Hourglass has been a very strong uptrend since like beginning of 2020. So the uptrend is there. The long-term uptrend is there. But Tesla, uh, sorry, uh, the Hourglass has a different price structure compared to Tesla, the, 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 the chart structure. Because previously here, uh, it doesn't have a, it doesn't have this, resistant turn support. It doesn't have this resistant turn support. But what it does have is um, previously, there is a consolidation here. There's a small consolidation here. Within that small consolidation, right, we have this ultra high volume green candle here. Okay. So it, it means to say that at this level, there's a lot of transaction, a lot of transaction going on, a lot of buyer, a lot of seller. A lot of people are interested in this level. And usually, um, if you say this, right, you will expect this area to get supported. Lah. So in a way, right, similarly, in a way, um, you can see that kind of example right here. You can see this um, big high volume candle coming up here. Although the volume is not so high, right, it, it is a spike. It is a spike. And you can kind of see that price gets supported there before it starts to chong up. Lah. So... And you can see how price retrace also 
price kind of like retrace a bit before showing up. So now we have like a similar position. We have this big green volume, ultra high green volume, uh, this green candle, and then price go up. Now price come back down near to this level and you can see the price kind of recovering, although the recovery is not as strong as Tesla where we see this um, pin bar and then there's a gap up, like Tesla move up 7%, but our glass currently for today, right, is at 3%. La. Okay, still, uh, we have an indication of a good chart structure and the positive price action when the price come near this chart structure. La. And in terms of the volume wise also, you can see this little green candle here, this green candle and with this volume here. So this is the first green volume that spike up since like this big green volume here. La. So uh, given this spike, right? And this is quite near the previous long big green volume. Also, we can see that there's a lot of transaction here there's a lot of um, interest in this price level here. Sorry, uh, there's a lot of interest in this price level here. And that price level is slightly above here. So, so this, this kind of price action indicate that at least like now, buyers are willing to buy at a higher price than previously, but a lot of buyers are interested in 1.9. But now, right, the moment price come back down, buyer doesn't want to wait until 1.9 really. They feel that, hey, Maybe at $2 is fair enough. Like, let's go and buy at $2. So that's, that's, that's give a suggestion that buyers are willing to buy at a slightly higher price than what it was used to be like maybe back in November. And you can see that after this period, price start to go down a bit, but the price going down, right? There isn't a lot of volume ready. So there isn't a lot of volume. It means to say that the price action below here, right? Price action below this, um, below this, crucial level, there's almost no volume. There's no volume there. It means no, nobody is interested in this price below $2 already. Like imagine price go down to $2 and there's no transaction. What does it tell you? It tells you that no one is willing to sell at $2 because previously everyone happily selling at $2. But now as price go below $2, nobody is selling. There's very little volume. And that is why in the next two or three days, you see price come back up. And you when you see the price come back up, right, you do see a little bit of increase in green volume because now price is back up to $2. People are willing to sell at $2. So the buyers are coming to buy back up. And hopefully, this is a good sign that we have established a support here. And if you are looking to buy, right, the current price is a good entry level. It is not so far from our previous entry level at 1.96. So this one slightly further up at 2.06, but um, you can still follow the same stop loss level, but your lot sizing might have to reduce by a bit to account for the increase in your entry price. Lah. But overall, I think this is a very safe entry and it should be able to head up to our previous TP level, which is at 2.4, meaning it is way, way above this. We, we expect price to even go beyond this and break the higher high. Okay, so uh, because now that we have a lower high, we believe that the higher high can be obtained. This, this previous resistance can be broken. So... <clears throat> Given how the market is quite slow and, and weak in the past one month, right? Do not expect this counter to fly immediately, but you do need to have holding power. Even, even for those who entered the original trade here, right? We have been holding for quite some time and you will see that most of our trade setup requires a little bit of holding power. La. And in return, right? What we get is we get a lot of stability. When market retrace, we don't get whip out very often and we are able to hold on to our strong counters and we will be keep adding on to these strong counters to get a big big profit towards the end so our glass is one of the counters that we have since like the earlier days you can see that the first trade setup was way back in june 23 when it was at like 1.46 and now it's already at like two dollars something so it's, it's about 50 percent up ready so um this trade setup I believe it is quite quite okay. I, I think this is better than Tesla 
and much more safer. <laughs> so, so depending on your preference, I will prefer our Glasgow Tesla. The last counter, Marvel Technology. So Marvel Technology is different from the other two in a sense that while we have a trade setup, the trade setup wasn't active yet. It was still pending, but due to the retrace, right, we are currently now active in this trade. Like if you decide to take, if you decide to take. So the current price, you can take this. You can take this price. And <clears throat> in terms of the trend, you can see it is also a very strong uptrend. And in terms of the chart structure, once again, right, I'm going to use this high volume candle, okay? So I'm going to use this high volume candle as the important chart structure. So high volume means there's a lot of interest. There's a lot of transaction. And that gives you an idea that there are buyers willing to buy here. There are sellers willing to sell here. And the moment price hit this area, right, you will expect a lot of buyer, a lot of seller, which means to say this kind of level is very hard to be broken. This level is very hard to get broken unless we have overwhelming amount of seller. But as long as there is a balance, there's an equilibrium, this level will not be broken, which is what we have seen here. Uh, price come back down and now it is going back up. So it is like how you imagine like Apple iPhone 13 is selling at $1,400. Do you think the price of iPhone 13 will go down to $500. No, it's not. It's never going down to $500 because $1,400 is what the seller Apple is interest is willing to sell at. And it is what the buyer like us is willing to buy at also. So that $1,300 is like a very agreeable price between the seller and the buyer. And price Apple iPhone 13 will always transact at that price. Until maybe one day, like the entire world, like gang up and boycott Apple and say, okay, we don't want to buy Apple 13 anymore. Then maybe Apple need to reduce their iPhone price to 600, 700. Then, then we might start buying again. So in this case, right, it's like we have overwhelming um, sellers lah, or, or we, we, we kind of like boycott the entire thing. <laughs> so it's a, not, not a really good, good example, but you get, you get what I mean. Lah. There's some, something need to happen to make this support go away. And for stock market, right, that something is overwhelming seller. But what we are seeing right now, there isn't any overwhelming seller for now. So it does seem that this area is... Um, getting supported very, very well. And we can go into this counter. And of course, once again, you follow the stop loss that is given here and the TP level also. So uh, it's quite simple. Just, just follow this trade setup. So this is like a valid, valid trade setup. Lah. But among the three, right, Marvel actually have the most positive trend, I would say positive trend in the sense that we don't really have a resistance at the top. I will not consider this resistance. It's, it's, it's not far enough. In fact, this whole area is like consolidation. Lah. So, so I, I, I do not consider this resistance. Uh, hourglass, I will consider this resistance because price came down far enough. But this is not a resistance. That is to say, right, this is not like, like when I'm looking at this portion here, I don't consider this to be a resistance also, okay? It is just price going up. So sometimes like the definition of resistance can be a little bit different on how people look at it. If you are someone who look at this in a one hour time frame, right? Then maybe this might be a resistance to you. But for Nimbus Capital, we trade on a daily time frame, And this is, uh, uh, personally to me, I don't consider this resistance. Lah. And, and um, yes, this might be a support, but there's no, there's no resistance up here. So I think the, the um, among, among the chart structure and the candles and the trend, right? I will rank Marvel as the top, Hourglass as the second, and Tesla as the third. So my trading preference will also follow this uh, priority in a sense that I will prefer Marvel, then I will look at Hourglass, then te lastly Tesla. La. But uh, overall, which, whichever trade that you want to take is entirely up to you. But do ensure that you are managing your risk very well. Of course, the choices here also have another factor in play. For example, if you already have 
six or seven Singapore counters, then you might not want to go into our glass, go and diversify out, diversify out a bit. Or let's say you have NVIDIA, you have Franken, you have UMS, you have AMBA, then maybe you might want to refrain from entering Marvel technology because you are going to add another electronic semiconductor to the list. Okay, so, that, so it, you, you have to look at trading a little bit on a holistic perspective, cannot everything blindly follow, blindly do things. Uh, you, you are going to have a very bad time. And uh, I can only hold your hand so much. Lah, that, that is what I want to say. I can only hold your hand so much. Eventually, there are still certain things that is going to just impact you yourself because it is defined by what you choose to enter, what is your preference. And because of that, right, certain decision is only makes sense to you. So, so if you ask me, within this tree, which one you should enter. I cannot tell you the answer because I don't know your portfolio. I don't know your exposure. So you still need a little bit of due diligence on your end. And I can only hold your hand so far. If you want that entire hand-holding package, right? That, that, that is where my course will come in. If you come to my course, I will hold your hand all the way to teach you all these small, small, minor, minor, minor things. But because Patreon is a service that is serving a lot of people at one go, I cannot make, uh, I, I cannot provide analysis that is very specific to individual that is like bespoke trading advice. <laughs> I, 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 I cannot do that because each and every one of you is very different on how you take your trades. And, and, and because of that, you, you do need to Think a bit like you do need to DYODD a bit, do your own due diligence. Okay, so hopefully this session gives you insight to some counters that you can look at. And let's hope that market continues to remain green and recover. And we have a very final last trading week next week. And we will start a fresh fall 2022. So I recently also uploaded all the Patreon updates that is coming up with Effective from 2022. Please go and take a look at that because I'll be adding a lot of new exciting stuff. And I just want to thank all my 2021 subscribers for supporting me all the way because um, Nimbus Capital, we are pretty new. We just set up and I sincerely believe that it takes a lot of faith and a lot of effort on your head on your end to actually trust me and come to all my webinar and recording now. so i sincerely thank you guys for supporting me throughout the entire 2021 and i hope that 2022 i'll be able to serve you guys better so all the best for the final week of 2021 trading week and stay safe